time goes on, a lot of people have been noticing that Sword and Shield is actually really cool now. Uh, it's always been cool, but they, they've been adding a lot onto it. So, since some people are wanting to pick it up maybe, or maybe do runs with it, I want to show how a runner would play this weapon, specifically TA, which would be no traps, no buddies, uh, all that jazz. Uh, obviously not a set in stone guide on, oh, play this weapon like this, because you can do whatever you want. Come on, Sounders, PvE, no one cares. They do care, they're weird. Um, but I do want to, I do think a lot of people would care about how you, like, what the most efficient way to play the weapon would be. So, in, in this video, I'm going to try and show that. But first off, I want to show off my set. Uh, this is 2.0. Uh, this will probably change in a month or so. But currently, and this isn't even an expensive set either. My charm is Wex 2, Evade Window 2, one slot. Which is nice, the Evade Window is convenient, but it's not, it's not like boosting me to the top or anything. Uh, so currently we're running Tigric Sword because white sharpness, big raw, etc. Again, sword might change. A lot of these armor, armor parts might change, but currently uh, we're running Kaiser Crown, Spike Mail. Um, if you if you have a better charm, you should run Lagambi Braces. Right now, I'm running Rathalos Braces and Rathalos Coil, which should be uh, Anjanat Coil, but I'm lazy. And that only adds two one slots, which I don't need yet. And then Ingot Greaves, which is... Uh, We'll go over the skills now. Ingot Greaves is attack boost 2, crit I2. It's very insanely good. Um, Rathalos Coil is attack boost 2 with a 2 slot. Rathalos Braces is the same thing. Bike Mail has no skills by default, but you can slot in. It has a 3 slot, a 2 slot, and a 1 slot. So you can slot in whatever 3, three tier skill if you have one that you want. Currently, I don't. Uh, so I slotted in Weakness Exploit, Wirebug Whisper, Speed Sharpening, and then this piece of hunk, um, which is the Kaiser Crown, with Critical I3 and Crit Boost 1, which is insane, and a one slot to boot. So, this is what I've been using. This is what I think is strong right now. Obviously, there are some tweaks you can make if you have a better charm, but I've been doing work with this, even with my budget charm. You can see the skills here. Which is attack boost 6, crit i5, crit boost 3, weakness exploit 3, speed sharpening 3. Uh, wire bug whisper 1 is another one that matters. Um, a big thing about sword and shield right now is that you don't have to run any sharpness skills because we don't use that much sharpness because we're just spamming shield attacks. I'll show that in a bit, pretty much. Uh, the only... Theoretically, the only move that should be taking sharpness from you is uh, Spinning Reaper. But this is the set right now. These are, these are the skills you would want. You don't really have to waste anything on Master's Touch or Razor Sharp or anything like that. Uh, unless they buff Perfect Rush in the future or something, this could become obsolete. First, I want to show off Sword and Shield's um, good moves. Um, there are three main ones, I would say. Um, hard Bash Combo. It's a lot of damage, just off nothing really. You can use this on the smaller openings, uh, stuff like that. Just have good positioning and be ready, and you'll be able to net yourself a lot of damage. Next is Shoryugeki, and this is, um, yeah, I actually didn't crit on those extra ticks there. So it should do even more damage. And this is me showing... Um, this is kind of the combo you're going to want. I don't know. It's going to be hard bash roll, hard bash roll, hard bash roll. And you could perfect rush. But the problem with perfect rush is... We don't run sharpness skills. And... A perfect rush takes about the time it takes to do two hard bash combos. 
and they do roughly the same damage. Hard Bash does a little less, but you're only using two sharpness instead of five. So it's really, um, it's a lot more efficient for sharpness and it lets the flow of fights go uh, a lot better. And then the last one is gonna be Falling Shadow. Um, this move is generally used if you don't, if, um, if Shoryugeki's on cooldown, and you think, uh, the, because the cooldown on Falling Shadow is extremely quick. So if you think you can use one wire bug while the second is recharging, and you think they'll both recharge around the same time, um, you should go for a Falling Bash. Or a, um, a Falling Shadow. And that'll net you a lot of damage, and if you have the time to do it, you can, uh, combo that into a Hard Bash. So that's kind of the trinity of Sword and Shield right now. Um, mostly avoiding sharpness loss because Sword and Shield has a lot of good ways to do it. Um, Shoryugeki is extremely strong. Hard Bash is extremely strong. Falling Bash is situationally extremely strong. So those are kind of the three you're going to want to use. There's other stuff. You're not really going to be using this. Not really gonna be using this to use too much sharpness. Um, you have other backstep options like this. That's not really crazy. Um, sometimes you will backstep to just avoid something. Uh, so a uh, easy way to do a quick backstep, backstep is to press R back in A in succession. You don't usually you can do this. Um, but that takes too much time, so you can do one immediately, off of just shielding. Uh, if you hold back, you'll do a Rising Slash, and that'll keep you in the same place. Uh, if you don't, you'll do an Advancing Slash, and you'll be back in the fray. Depending, it just depends on when you need to do that. But that's pretty much the, those are the fundamental moves of Sword and Shield. That's what you're generally going to be using. And so, uh, real quick, I'm going to go into a few hunts, and I'm going to explain um, kind of the fundamentals of an opening and like when to use Shoryugeki and stuff like that. Just a quick thing here, um, usually you're either eating for Slugger or not Slugger. Either one, uh, it can be dependent on the monster. If Slugger, um, can net you another KO, surely go for it. Um, if it doesn't, it might, uh, you might want to not run Slugger because you might get a KO at a better moment. It's about, it's more about the experience on the fight, uh, that'll let you know, uh, which one you would want to run. Either, either one is viable. Another, uh, quick little tip here. If you abandon a quest, you get the same food skills as you got last time you ate. If you abandon a quest and then eat the same meal. Um, if you have that issue on resets, just make another same, uh, another variation of the same thing, and you'll get another roll at it. Sometimes it happens with Slugger and it can be really annoying, but if you just do this, um, you won't have that issue. Okay, so here's Rathian. Uh, if there's a, a fight I could say is the best fight to learn Sword and Shield from, I would say it was this one because uh it teaches you how good Shoryu is uh among, among other things it teaches you the main opening for monsters and um and just general fundamentals of what an opening might be what you would want to go for uh to get a Shoryu Geki so here's the opening here you just kind of want to get her attention. I miss a few times. Uh, usually you would want to walk into the monster just so they roar and so you aren't at a weird position. But you can just kind of hit the wing if she's doing that. And I still get it there. So right there, uh, on the roar, you just shore you it. And you counter that, and on most monsters you're going to get a KO off the Falling Bashes at the very least. Uh, and so after that, you're going to want to uh, spam Hard Bashes. Uh, there is a case for Perfect Rush. Uh, since you're gonna get the Swivern 
right stun really quick. And when you get that, you get to sharpen. Uh, you won't have used that much white, and that's about it. Uh, usually on a on wall banks, you only want to do one because you want to maintain time you have with the third wire bug. Uh, I just kind of forgot it there. <laughs> but here, uh, sometimes you'll be able to take advantage of the kind of AI a monster might have while in um, while in this little silk bind or whatever you would want to call it, where they're kind of restricted to one uh, small area. Uh, but I didn't really get it there. You notice um, here, okay. So I missed the shore you here, and this is a good opportunity for me to do a falling shadow on that opening. Rapian's very easy to dunk. Um, usually you want to show you that tail flip, but if you don't have the opportunity or you mess up, you can falling shadow it and hit the head, and that'll probably net you a dunk, because Rathian is very easy to dunk. I missed the shore you again. I still get the dunk, because like I said, she is extremely easy to dunk. This wasn't the cleanest of runs, but it still kind of shows off shows off some mistakes you can make and still come back from them. And then when she gets up, show you the tail flip. You will always hit her head if you are spaced properly. And that is one of the uh, biggest advantages by far of Sword and Shield versus Rathian. This ledge was annoying. Uh, not much I could have done about that. Here's another tail flip. Bam. Easy dunk. She's almost dead already, even with all those all those mess ups. So you're just gonna spam hard bash on the knockdown, uh, and generally that's pretty much the whole fight. Um, if she fireballs and you're close enough, uh, you can show you that. You can show you the enrage roars if you don't have if you have the wire bugs, which I didn't at that moment. Uh, charge is always annoying. There's nothing you can do about that. This is another example of a fireball, but I couldn't really be there in time to show you it. But you notice, if they're so far away and they're shooting a projectile, you can just falling shadow towards it. Uh, if you're early enough and you aim correctly, you can even hit the head and it'll still be a really good punish because falling shadow has iframes on the moment it hits. But that's pretty much it. Uh, I really suggest doing this hunt if you want to learn sword and shield because I think it can kind of teach you the basics and you'll kind of get the gist of it pretty quickly. Uh, just practice showing you the tail flips, uh, get the opening, and then just some hard bashes from time to time. Okay, so here's Rajang. This is the uh, second hunt I wanted to show off. Um, it's not the best area. Uh, the opening gets screwed up by a Gajau, but I still kind of showed what I wanted to show. Uh, you, you might reset if you don't get the opening. That makes sense, but you kind of salvage it here. Uh, get, get a knockdown off the first shore you usually. Uh, here, um, you're just going to hard bash twice, and this is why I said you can make a case for perfect rush. Actually, put it into use here. Uh, I did two hard bashes into a perfect rush, and I get that just teensy bit of extra damage you can get off, um, off a perfect rush. And here is the Wyvern Riding Stun. And so right there, you're going to be able to sharpen, and that perfect rush uh, did not use too much sharpness to not be worth it. So there's still a use case at times. Once again, you're going to wall bank once and maintain, maintain the time you have with that third wire bug, because that's very important. Uh, I was not expecting him to do a jump, uh, jump fireball, but whatever lasers weird uh usually at the beginning of the little wire trap uh and he does his spin he won't go that far so you can actually shore you it and it won't whiff and it didn't whiff there but if you shore you at the proper time and he does it at a good time um uh you can hit the head right there is a good example of hitting the trimmer on those arms, he usually does three, and then he slams the ground for a tremor, and you can show you that tremor uh, and hit the head. Once again, just getting uh, these hard bashes. No perfect rush this time because I want to maintain sharpness. You can see my white is not uh, not nearly as high anymore. Getting a flinch here, get those three extra hard bashes. 
get hit here, uh, because sometimes you are not ready to back up, and that was a time I was not ready to back up. But it's okay, because I didn't really get too much of a, of a punish out of it. I could have if I had sure you the grab, uh, but I didn't have the wire bugs for it anyways. Once here, uh, if you don't have sure you, this is another situation where you can do a falling shadow. Uh, on this in Rage Roar, if you time a hard bash right, he jumps very slightly before landing on the ground, and you can get a dunk. Here is a very is one of the more advanced punishes that you can get with uh, this run. Uh, if he back hops, that back hop has a hitbox, and if he sure you at the right distance, you will always uh, hit the head right after. And you can get a flinch, you can get a KO or whatever. Uh, when he's in this state, you want to always, uh, if you get a KO, always go for the tail and you'll get another knockdown. And you'll get about three hard bashes off of this. And it's just generally uh, good damage. Usually he will enrage right after. Uh, you roll towards his back hop and you get a hard bash combo. You might get a few more after he lands. Here's arms again and then just show you it. I hit the arm on accident, but I end up breaking it, which is going to land me two hard bashes. All right, another Enrage War. I'm going to use it to sharpen instead of trying to get the dunk. Uh, luckily, he does a move with some fair startup. Uh, you can just kind of dodge that move by walking backwards. Uh, this was another iffy uh, spin. If you don't have the Shoryu, you can kind of line up at the side and hit him with a short hard bash combo. It's it's a lot harder to do than the Shoryu, if you want me to be honest, but you can still do it and uh, maintain that momentum you have on the monster in the run. Area transition, not exactly what you want, but it's pretty hard to avoid in that area if you aren't, like, uh, playing bow. <laughs> right. So once again, this is a very easy Shoryu. You just turn around, and it's pretty free. So here, he's going to do these hops forward, and this is always followed up with a back hop. I don't have the Shoryu, so I just go for that hard bash again. Uh, if you get one of these... I should have Falling Shadowed, to be honest, but it can always be wonky if you don't have the resources to hit the tail, because you probably will not hit the tail. Uh, Sword and Shield is, does not have that much vertical reach. Uh, if he does Blanca Ball with red arms, he always follows up with a laser, and you roll over here, and you get a Falling Shadow into Hard Bash. Now back hop, if he back hops far away, he always does those hops into the back hop, so it's a free show you on the head. Uh, another moment where I got hit. Sometimes you can just get unlucky and not get the flinch you want, but that's okay. Heal here. Uh, get a hard bash on the head after the laser, and he's dead. So even with, like, non-optimal, few mistakes, you can still get a fair run going. Uh, I think Rajeng is kind of the advanced monster to learn for harder Shoryu things. And now I kind of want to explain um, kind of the fundamentals and kind of kind of how you find out uh, how you kind of determine what your punish is, you know? So a roar, you would always want to counter with a shoryu. I couldn't at that moment, but that's nine times out of ten always your opener unless they have a roar that you cannot hit their head in. Uh, at that point, you would want to at least hit the next weakest spot. Uh, Elder Dragons are kind of hit hard to hit with a Shoryu opening. I think it might be possible. I actually haven't tested it. But uh, that's generally the opening you want because you'll always get a KO from it. Again, I get the KO off this Body Slam right here. Uh, perfect Rush is good. Basically, so on a knockdown... I mean, it's pretty basic. I don't really have to explain what you want to do on a knockdown. You want to hit the monster. Uh, but sometimes you can kind of gauge how much sharpness you have and go for the perfect rush like I did. Uh, and just get that teensy bit of extra damage, which can be worth it. After that, you know, Wallbang wants to maintain um, three wire bugs because the longer, the longer you have those three wire bugs for, the more sure use you can do. And sure you is going to be the main source of your damage. Uh, I guess that's that's kind of what I did there. 
is kind of a good example of just a small opening that you use to squeeze just a little bit more damage with Hard Bash in. That one back hop, if you have the time, there's no, uh, there's nothing you can counter with Shoryu. You don't have the time to Falling Shadow. Um, you can just get those three hits in, maybe the fourth, um, and just squeeze that little bit of damage in. That's kind of the fundamental of Hard Bash uh, when you're not doing it on a knockdown. It's those smaller punishes that either you don't want to use a wire bug for, or uh, you can't short you. Stuff like that. Again, you can just kind of intercept the entirety of that roar. And this, this is another one. Short you everything. I've kind of been wanting to say this uh, the whole time. Short you literally anything. <laughs> if something has a hitbox, you want to find out uh, how and where you shore you. Um, some moves, like charges, sure you is not very good on, but like the majority of moves um, are sure you being. Uh, most of Rishang's move, if there's a trimmer, you should sure you it. If there's just any hitbox at all, uh, kind of like with the, uh, the back hops. Let me see if I can... There's the back hop here. That I don't get a show you off of. Here, 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 here. So he does that backwards. I know he's gonna do uh, the hops. So I strafe a little left and I position just right. And I go right where the hitbox will still hit me, but where the show you will still proc. And I hit his head perfectly, spot on. So it's kind of stuff like that. Show you everything. And I kind of explained the fundamentals of, you know, falling shadowing. Uh, and stuff like that. So that's kind of the gist of like the fundamentals of a punish. So that's kind of what you should look for. In short, Sword and Shield is a weapon that really always has something to do, whether it's Hard Bash, um, Falling Shadow, Shoryu Geki. It's always got something to do and it keeps that momentum throughout the fight and it feels really nice. It's kind of like a dance. Um, and just along with some extremely satisfying moves uh, here and there. Uh, sure, Yugeki, obviously. Falling Shadow's satisfying, too. Uh, it's got a lot of meat to it, uh, hidden beneath all that, you know, quote-unquote beginner weapon stuff. Um, but it's a very fun weapon. Uh, if you want to try it, I really I really hope you do. Uh, the first time I tried out Sword and Shield, it kind of opened my eyes uh, to how fun this weapon is. So try it out if you want. If you're already trying it out, I hope uh, this helped a little. And that's kind of it. Uh, there might be more stuff I can get into later. Maybe some different guides. Uh, if I can think of something else to make. But it, it, in, in general, uh, I feel like I kind of explained what I wanted to explain. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you want feels weird to say uh like if you want if you did uh but either way thank you for watching and uh show you everything